Okay, so sometimes it is quite useful to, to estimate the value of a complex integral by using the following theorem, which is called the ML inequality. And this is just a result of complex analysis. And remember that this, this series is mainly dedicated to the applications of complex analysis to solving integrals and, and problems that involve complex functions. But the ML inequality is a quite, quite, a, quite an interesting and important theorem because it tells us that we evaluate the, the following complex integral. So for any functions that define on the curve C, this looks like the absolute value, but in general, this actually just means the magnitude of that because remember, we usually get a vector, a sorry, not a vector, a complex number out of this. So the result of this, the evaluation is a complex number. And remember that the magnitude of a complex number is denoted by these uh, straight bars on the sides, which look like absolute value bars, but in general, it just means the, the magnitude of the complex number. And this is gonna be less or equal to ML. So that's why it is called the ML inequality. So what's M here? So M is the upper bound on the function FC, FZ, in the region, or really, I shouldn't see, say in the region, but on the curve C, on C. So C is gonna be defined between any two points. So M is gonna be the upper bound or the, um, a, a value that is either greater or equal to the maximum value of that set on, along that curve between two points A and B. And remember, these points are gonna be complex uh, numbers. And then we're going to have the following. We're going to have L is going to be, and then we can define this as the magnitude of the function evaluated at that point, or the absolute value is going to be less or equal than M. So that's the upper bound. Now L is going to be defined as a line, in, no, not the line integral, but the arc length of the curve C between those two points. So we know that in general, the, the arc length is represented by the following function. So we have the arc length element DL, and this is the same as saying A to B of a function of X. So we usually write this. This is a direct consequence of um, doing the infinitesimal hypotenuse of a, of a triangle and using DX and DY as the rise and run or as the sides of the right angle triangle. So we did that in, in line integrals in the calculus playlist. So hopefully you remember this. And this is going to be the derivative of the function x squared dx, right? So we define the curve as a function of x. Uh, so so th something like y equals to f of x. And then this is the arc length of that curve between the points a and b. So how can we apply this? Well, let's see. Let's do a little example. Let's have a curve that goes um, on the imaginary plane. We have a line segment, that's our curve, between the points one and one i, or one. So remember, this is the imaginary axis. So we just write the, the imaginary number attached to it, next to it. And this is going to be our curve C. So it goes from zero. So this means that in general, our function of f, or our curve is going to be defined by mx plus b, which is just the, the equation of the line. But in this case, we can easily see that the gradient is one, and the y-intercept is zero. So this means that y is gonna be equal to x, such that the derivative of y is going to be one. And that means that we can calculate the arc length directly. So arc length is going to be from zero to one. Those are the limits of integration here one squared plus one squared dx. And this in the end turns out to be square root of two. So that's going to be the arc length of that, which we could have found using the uh, Pythagoras theorem as well. And then to find m, we get how to find f of z. So let's say we're interested in integrating or finding uh, an upper bound for the following integral. So let's say we have z, um, Let's say we have 
the function or, or the integral z squared dz and then what we're going to do with this is we're going to define our function z as z squared so that's going to be our function so that means that for m we're going to establish the following inequality so that's the inequality for m now to find the value of m from this what we can do is we can take the two points the two endpoints here 0 and 1 plus i So we can essentially take the, the two points here, 0 and 1 plus i, and then we're just going to plug them in. So we know that for 0, that's just going to be 0, so that's not going to give us a maximum value. The maximum value in here would be at 1 plus i, because obviously the function is going to increase for that. So if we put 1 plus i here, then we can expand this. So this is going to become 1 plus 2i minus 1 this to cancel out and then in the end we end up with the following so that's going to be uh, absolute value or magnitude of the complex number 2i less or equal than m and we know that the magnitude of a complex number is the square root of the real part and the imaginary part both squared and added together so this is going to be this is going to be square root of 2 squared so these two are going to cancel out and then in the end what we're going to get as our value of m our upper bound is actually going to be 2 so this is the upper bound it's the minimum value that m can attain in this case is 2 so now that we have the arc length and we have the value of m the upper bound we can establish the following relation we can establish the inequality again which is going to be the integral, the absolute value, is going to be less or equal than 2 times square root of 2. So this is going to be the maximum value that this function can attain at for any point along that curve. And how do we prove this? Well, we can find, in this case, we can actually evaluate this. So let's evaluate it to see if the inequality actually holds. So let's parameterize. So I'm just going to do this at the top here because we need to get some space so we can make our x the independent variable call it a parameter t and y is going to be a function of x so that's going to be t and t is going to have the same limits as x so that's going to be 0 to 1 and now our z is going to be defined as t plus ti and then this z is going to be 1 plus i dt such that the integral of z squared dz is going to become integral from 0 to 1 of t plus t ti squared squared times 1 plus i dt and then this is going to become equal to 0 to 1 of t squared of 2i 1 plus i dt and hopefully this you can see that this is going to go to 2i t cubed over 3 plus i t cubed over 3 from 0 to 1 and then this is going to give us the following complex number so 2 over 3 plus 2 over 3i So now if we take the magnitude of this, so the magnitude of this number or, or the absolute value in terms of the complex number, we're going to get the following. We're going to have minus 2 and 3 squared plus 2 and 3 squared, which is equal to square root of 8 over 9. And this is equal to 2 square root of 2 over 3. And yes, this is less than 2 square root of 2, which is the ML quantity that we just calculated, so the inequality holds. So this ML inequality is a, is a good way to evaluate the upper bounds of a function that we're integrating, or the integral with respect to a complex function. It's, it's really useful in some cases when, where we cannot actually calculate the, 
the exact value of this but in this case we could so we could prove that the inequality actually holds and in the next video we're going to continue on defining contours and contour integration and we're going to introduce the Cauchy theorem which is going to allow us to solve a lot of more complicated integrals in future videos